Hello everyone, it's Krish here again. Thank you very much as usual. All the feedback, comments, likes, sharing and everything. And also uh, happy to tell you that we reach 5000 subscribers. Now we are keep going. I am never counting subscribers, I never count the number of likes or comments but I was focusing on uh, uh, creating good content, I'm putting a lot of effort on that. So as a result, has, I got 5,000 subscribers. Thank you very much everyone who's being with me. And uh, I'm planning to give more and more content, more and more different topics uh, through this channel. And also people keep asking, uh, move this, uh, this course, complete course to Udemy and platforms and uh, like they want to support to this channel. So I'm going to put a link uh, below this video uh, in the description section. If you feel to support to this channel, you can use that uh, link and you can contribute your support to the channel. And keep in mind, it is not must. Don't feel that you must do that in case you gain something from the channel. And if you're in a position that you can um, support this channel, you can click that link, PayPal link and uh, uh, give your support to the channel. Because though you see 20 to 30 minutes videos in this channel, uh, I put like almost uh, 4 to 6 hours to create one video because uh, I have to plan the thing and I had to do the samples and had to uh, prepare the content and record the video and edit the video and uh, all those things take at least good 4 to 6 hours. But I don't, uh, this is not for money what I'm doing, but I'm doing this only the reason is to teach people and to get the people to know the right thing in the easy way because people says when I teach things they can learn they can understand you can see the comments your feedback that's why I'm running this channel so but you feel to uh, support this channel please go ahead and uh, do this I'm really really appreciate your contribution and your support but again it is not must uh, you have to do okay in the last video, in the video 16, I think, uh, what we did is we learned discovery server, right? So we use Eureka and we did the discovery server. And also we learned how to configure uh, the clients to talk to the server, right? I'm not going to explain how the discovery service works again. And uh, as I, uh, in the last video, we configured the customer service, right? And, but off the line, I configured a uh, rent service and but I kept one service again to continue this video as a recap how to configure client to um, our discovery uh, server okay so let's move here uh, I'm going this uh, this one we already configured so we pending is a vehicle service right so I'm going to uh, close all and then take this one okay and as a sample and this one as a destination right so what we did is we need to move the uh, dependency management section because we need to use the spring cloud for this right and also uh, we need to use the eureka client dependency right because that is the only dependency we need to add because we need the client dependency to talk to server right and also one more thing uh, we need to uh, use this property which is the the cloud version uh, what we are running here and we need to copy it here right so now everything is ready good to go right so in with the dependency section so let's re-import okay good and we go back here and we tell this uh, service you are eureka client right so enable eureka client right and also we learned last time uh, if you remember uh, we need to set certain parameters certain properties even before the application.yaml file or application.property file process right for that what we did is we create a new file called um, bootstrap.yaml right so we get a new file called bootstrap.yaml for here we configure our uh, port to zero because we need to uh, this port to be dynamic we discussed in the last video the reason behind this and also application name and this is vehicle service so I configure this as a vehicle okay and also we need to tell register with Eureka right so register with uh, Eureka we need to set to true and also fetch registry we need to set to 
true because I prefer to fetch the register to my local. In that case, I do not want to um, uh, all the requests sent to back to the Eureka server. Right. Also, we learn we need instance ID, right? Because that is also we learned uh, last video why we need the unique instance ID. For this one, I am going to use uh, spring application name and hyphen I am going to use some random integer, right? Um, random dot int. Okay. So, all the reasons behind every configuration we made, we discussed in the last video. So, this video I am not going to repeat that, but you can um, you can go back and check that. So, if you come back here in the uh, rent, video, uh, rent service, right? In the resource file, so you can uh, see, um, oh, first name I forgot to add, I will, I will add right now. Right, so set the port to 0, the port, when the port is set to 0, the, it will be dynamic port. But since we are going to call this from the, uh, the REST client today, and when you set it to dynamic, it is it's really painful because every time you need to go back and see what the port is running. So, I am going to fix it to 8191 as a usual port uh, to the service, but all other services are pointed to um, uh, random ports, right? So, here we say host name is localhost, okay. So, cool. So, now uh, let us get these things running. So, first I am going to run the discovery uh, application, discovery service. I am let it to run because uh, all other services are expecting this service is healthy running to get registered, okay. It is working. So, now I am going to run the vehicle service, rent service and also customer service. Okay, so if you go back to this one, so you can see here, oh, no, it's registered. Okay, cool. So now you can see the rent service run on a port 8191 because we hard coded that port. You can see in the left uh, uh, bottom corner, right? And if you go back here, you will see uh, 51330 and this one uh, 9191 vehicle service also run on 9191, but we didn't expect it to happen that. The reason is, though we configure the port 0 here, probably it is this available in the here. Okay, yeah, cool. We need to remove that from the application configuration file. So, vehicle service, I am going to restart. Okay, uh, because uh, this is how it works, right? First is process the bootstrap.yaml file and set all the properties, but then it process the application.yaml file. If you put some properties, the same properties in the both files, uh, the application.yaml file, it's override your previous property, okay. So, come back here, okay. So, now vehicle run on a dynamic port, rent run on a fixed port and customer run on a, again dynamic port, okay. So, objective today is if you remember in our rent service, we hard coded URL, right? So, let us go back to the, uh, let us um, close this and go back to rent service. If you go here, you can see in the IMPL, so we hard coded few URLs to localhost 8080, right? And localhost 9191, right? So, today I am going to show you how we can do this along with the discovery, right? So, in the li life cycle, you remember, uh, what this, how this works is now you have a discovery server running, right? So discovery running on its default, its the default port and the default uh, URL. So we don't need to tell client specifically what is the uh, discovery server. So now the, what the client does is when they start up, it check the configuration and it talk to uh, discovery server and tell its name and the. Uh, IP address and the port is running, right? So, name is always take from this bootstrap.yaml file and the spring.application.name. So, that is the name is provided to register. So, now uh, what we can do is we can ask from the discovery server, hey, I have a name, right? So, tell me what is the IP address and the port, right? So, if it is the only instance running, obviously, it is going to return that one. If there are multiple instances are running, is going to return uh, depend on the uh, the configured algorithm. So which service need to take this request, right? So in our example, what happens is we talk to rent service, rent service talk to vehicle service and the customer service, right? So therefore, what I'm going to do here, uh, I go back to this controller here, right? 
so we added last time um, this one right so local uh, date time uh, now right the current time with the service hit right so now what we need to do is let's see how we take the rent service to use um, okay here right so let's close everyone else okay so now you can see here we have hard coded this URL right so now let's see how this one talk to discovery service and get this information okay so for this one um, we need to do few things right first you need to tell we already did that so we need to tell this is a Eureka client right so this part is already done right so that is completed so now we need to come here in the rest template we need to tell to use the load balance right so there are two uh, annotation you can use here but the right one is the load balance you can use a ribbon uh, client as well so you can read the documentation if you're interesting but ribbon client is not the right you are right annotation to use you can use the load balanced here and for this one instead of the localhost 8080 right so what is this one customer so i can just use customer right so remember in the customer service we configure the port it to zero right so that, as a result in the customer service now running on port 51330 right you can see the screen uh, bottom left corner is a port 51330 right so now uh, this one so what this will do, do is the rest template so it will talk to discovery client discovery server and ask hey my name is customer tell me the ip address and the port right it comes here and it replaced with the whatever the incoming uh, values and it used right so here i'm going to use vehicle right so now i'm going to uh, so now i'm going to deploy rent service again right stop and running okay So now we have vehicle service. Let's clean the dashboard. And now you have uh, rent service, customer service, and the vehicle service. Okay. So now what we need to do is we can send them. This is the last the request we sent last time. Okay. So we send the request, and you can see it talked to all the servers and take it back right so you can see it hit the uh, customer service application and hit this one rent service is obviously the calling application this one right so now you can see when you send the three requests it's go to three times in the customer service now we'll see how this load balance actually uh, work so if you go here what i'm going to do is a little trick right i go back to controller right so i'm going to set one here let's say one is already running two here right so let's see edit configuration my customers application not the single instance okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run one more customer instances okay right so it's running one more customer instances so now i'm going to use a three here right the third one third instance right and i'm going to run that one also Okay, so go back to this one and clear the custom application is clear and the third one is also clear, right? So now if you go back here, you will see there are three instances from um, customer is uh, running now, right? So one run on a 51330, other one run on a 51580, other one run on a 51556, right? So now all these are the consoles. So now I'm going to send the request, okay? So one request, it hit which one? First one, right? And the second request, it hit the same one, right? Because when you send this speed, it always go to the same thing because that is the, the frequently used service, right? So I'm going to keep sending a few requests. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So now you can see it's still it's only take request for this one, first one, okay? 
so I'm going to keep sending it very fast okay so now if you go back here you can see that a certain request came to the second one that's why you can see the second here right and the certain request came to even third one right because if you send one after the other it's because this is there is no much logic there are no much logic processing inside these services so as a result it, it has enough time to uh, refresh so it uh, send the traffic to the same service but when you keep sending right let, let's say uh, one more time so clear all clear all and clear all so now you can see it's very load balanced right if you send one after the other is probably hit all three to uh, same service or oh, this time is distributed right now this time is even distributed right so now one two three okay right but if you keep sending few you can clearly see this right so now you can see it's perfectly distributed through throughout our instances now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop um, let's say something right I don't know which one I think it's a number two number two we stopped right so now if you send requests from here it still is take but not to the number two it probably take number three or something like that right right so now now you can perfectly understand how uh, we replace uh, this one right so now we don't have a hard coded values anymore it just uh, we give the service name so this talk to discovery and take uh, the URL uh, sorry uh, IP address and the port right so we exact we nicely demonstrated this why because the customer service we ran three instances on a three different ports right is perfectly replaced for each request and distributed the request throughout the instances with the load balance right so now but we need one more problem we need to solve right so now we send the request to rent service rent service talk to customer service and rent service talk to um, vehicle service now for some reason let's say all customer service is out right so let's stop all the running customer services right so now customer service one is off and the last customer service which is the third customer service is off right so now no customer service are running if you go back here you can see no customer service are running now but still still our uh, vehicle service is running now if you send the request it will give you an error right but in the microservice world this is not good this is not correct why because resilience is must it is not optional resilience is must in this case rent service is available that means we, we expect the user is expecting to get the rent information it has the rent information now the only the, what is missing is to send the customer id and the, get the customer information but objective is to get the rent information so you can get the rent information as well as you can get the vehicle information but just because of one service is fair your entire request is fair this is not good so we need to introduce something called circuit breaker circuit breaker what it, it will do is it will go, if one service is off it will skip that and move to the next one right so resilience is inbuilt that is for the next video right so now uh, we know how the discovery works and now we know how the service integrates the discovery right next video i'm going to show you how the circuit breaker works with the so that will introduce the resilience so then only this is really practically useful and again thank you very much for taking me here thank you very much for being with me and make sure subscribe right now if you're not subscribed yet because there are so many uh, interesting things to come and also share this video with your friends because if they're interesting we can they also can gain good knowledge and also i added um, links uh, to this description if you feel to support this channel go ahead and support but don't feel it's as a must thank you very much see you again stay safe take care